Welcome to Lesson 2, Part 4, Budgeting for Independent Living, Utilities. We're going to talk about some of the ongoing utility expenses you may need to think about as you prepare to move into your own room or apartment or split the costs with friends or family in a shared living space. So how much do utilities cost? Take a quick moment and jot down what you think the average gas, electric, internet bill is. We're going to start off by first talking about the core utilities, gas, electric, and water. Gas and electric are the two main ones that most renters pay. And the companies that tend to provide these or bill you are National Grid and Con Ed. There is a third company in the energy sphere, and this is an energy services company or an ESCO. While Con Edison or National Grid is responsible for delivering energy to your home, you have a choice of who supplies the energy that you consume. Once you set up an account, you can shop around for an electricity or gas rate from an ESCO. Some people prefer these because they want an alternative energy source. Instead of relying on fossil fuels, they may want a supplier who uses solar or wind energy. Additionally, some of these companies have cheaper rates or product discounts that may be a little bit more affordable. Con Ed is the electric utility provider for all five boroughs of New York City. So every time you turn on your lights or lamps, use your stove if it's electric, or use appliances like fans, air conditioners, dishwashers, or space heaters, that's contributing to your electricity bill, which you'll get from Con Ed. Here's an electric bill from Con Ed. You can see it's broken down into two pieces because this person is using an ESCO. Their electricity supplier is Clean, energy, Clean Choice Energy, Inc., while Con Ed is delivering the energy. So this bill is made up of two pieces, but the total amount goes to Con Ed. $29.35 of this charge is coming from Clean Choice Energy for supplying the energy. $34.87 is being billed by Con Ed for delivering the energy. However, like I said, the overall total amount owed, $64.22, gets paid to Con Ed. This person is enrolled in direct pay, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Sometimes gas may be included in your rent, though not always. If you need to set up an account in your name or for your unit, you can search online or ask your landlord if you should contact Con Edison or National Grid. What appliances use gas in your apartment? If you have a gas stove, then you're using gas to cook. Some buildings have electrical powered heating, but most buildings have gas powered heating. This is why you'll see higher gas bills in the winter and lower ones in the summer. Your heating system also warms water for things like showers, washing machines, and dishwashers. Here's a national grid gas bill. You can see a breakdown of the amount of gas or therms used, as well as the charges and taxes. At the top, you'll see this is an actual meter reading. That means an employee of National Grid came out and checked the meter for this unit. Sometimes instead of actual, the bill will say estimated. That means that someone wasn't able to come out and look at your meter, but they've estimated how much you've used based on your past usage. If this is the case, you may get an adjusted bill the following month, with either some credit to carry over for gas that you didn't use that they thought you might have, or you may get an extra bill if you use more than they had estimated. Most renters never see a water bill in New York City as it's included in their rent. However, there may be some instances in which you are asked to pay for water by your landlord or receive a bill from the city. Water bills are sent from the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. As you are likely well aware, New York City features a true four season climate. Summer is hot and humid and temperatures drop below freezing in the winter. Because of this change in climate, your utility bill will also vary in price depending on the time of year. In the summer, you can expect higher electricity costs due to air conditioning and fans, whereas in the winter, you can expect higher heating or gas costs. As of December 2020, the average utility bill in New York City for a 915 square foot dwelling was $146.26 per month. Here we mapped out one New York City residence 
utility bills over the course of about two and a half years. The blue line is the Con Edison bill. This is the electricity, and as you can see, it tends to be a little bit higher in the warmer months. The next line is National Grid, and that's the gas bill. It tends to be a little bit higher in the winter months. This person's average monthly utility expenses is $158.78 per month, which is not too far off from the average we saw earlier of $146.26. Some companies like National Grid offer balanced billing to help you anticipate your monthly energy costs and plan your household budget accordingly. The company will estimate your yearly bill and break that into 12 equal payments. An energy company employee will still come to check your meter on occasion and make adjustments, so you're still paying for the total energy you use in a year. You may get a credit if you overpaid or face additional charges if you used more energy than predicted. Now let's take a look at telecommunications. Spectrum, Verizon, and Optimum are some of the most common telecommunications companies in New York City. Some of these companies provide service in certain areas but not others, so you will ne need to check to see who is available in your neighborhood and your building. Once you know this, and think that you might have a computer, laptop, or smart TV, there are some things to consider when choosing an internet package. How much speed do you need? This depends on a few factors, one of which is what are you going to do with that internet connection? If you're going to be frequently streaming TV and video shows and or participating in online gaming, then you'll likely need a higher speed package. If your internet usage is generally internet website browsing, then you can probably get away with a cheaper, smaller package. Another factor is how many people will be using the internet at the same time. If you have roommates or kids who will be using the internet at the same time that you are, you'll likely want to spring for a higher package. What services do you want? Many of these companies provide not only internet, but also cable TV and phone service. You may be able to get a bundle in which you save some money compared to purchasing each of these separately. Another thing to think about if you're going to have just a laptop is that it might be cheaper to get a Wi-Fi hotspot and use your cell phone to access the internet on your computer rather than purchasing a separate package. The amount of your internet bill will depend on the amount of speed you've decided that you need. The low end of most internet packages runs around $30 or $40, whereas the high end can be over $100 per month. When we looked at the electricity bill a few minutes ago, I mentioned that it was direct pay. Many of these utility providers will have an option for direct pay or automatic billing. If you have an online bank account or a credit card, you can set up automatic payments for each utility. You'll still receive an email each month with your bill attached and a notification about the date the payment will be deducted. The date is usually based on a billing schedule set by the company, but you may have some flexibility in staggering dates as long as you select to pay before the deadline. What should you think about when deciding if you want to engage in direct pay or automatic billing? There are a number of pros. It's convenient, saves time, and is free. You don't have to think about your bills because they will automatically get deducted from your bank account or charged to your credit card statement without you having to do anything. This reduces the chance of you paying late. Once you set it up, it's automatic, so you won't be charged with late fees. It can be easier to prove payment if a dispute arises. Some phone or internet companies also offer a discount if you select auto pay. Having a steady stream of on-time payments can also help improve your credit score. What are the cons? If the payment gets deducted at a time when you don't have the funds available to pay it, you may overdraft your account and then face extra charges from your bank. If you decide to try this, you're not stuck with it forever. You have the right to end automatic payments at any time. And if the amount of the bill changes each month, you will get a notice so you'll know what will get withdrawn. If you select to do this, you may want to try to stagger your payments so all of your bills don't get deducted in the same short period of time each month. And make sure that you're checking your bank statements regularly to make sure you have enough money to cover the payments 
and that the payments are made for the right amount of money at the right time. So how does this all add up each month? These estimates, which total about $300 a month, are based on averages for gas, electric, internet, cell phone, and renter's insurance. It's certainly possible to find both lower or higher rates for each of these. Some of these can also be split with roommates so you're not shouldering the cost alone. Rent and utilities aren't the only budgetary concerns you'll have once you secure a job and move out. You may also elect to pay for health insurance, medical, dental, or vision. You may want to contribute to a retirement fund or put money towards a life insurance policy. Your employer may offer flex spending, which allow you to take money out pre-tax for health, transit, and child care. If you have children, you may need to continue to pay child support, pay for child care, or contribute to their other needs, such as clothing, diapers, and school supplies. If you have debt, you may need to budget some money to pay towards your credit card debt or student loans. And of course, you'll need to eat, and there will be other household expenses. Even if you're moving back in with family, you may be expected to contribute to the household in some ways that we haven't talked about as well. However, there are many free tools available to help you create and stick to a budget. There are lots of free phone apps and tools and templates using spreadsheets and other documents. For more information on some of these options, reach out to your financial management instructor. To get credit for completing this lesson, please return to the Google Classroom Classwork page and submit the Lesson 2 Part 4 Assessment, Budgeting for Independent Living Utilities Google Form.